my YouTube friends. I did a video all about the new Prism Live Studio and made some bold claims about its performance. See, Prism spent the last six months revamping their already amazing streaming software to streamline it and make it lighter and faster. But just telling you this is not really enough. So today, I'm gonna show you how amazing it is. First, we're gonna take a minute and put together a basic stream with multiple scenes. Just for those who may not be familiar with how Prism works, Prism Live Studio is totally free. Then I'm going to import my full, very complex live stream and test it out to see how it runs. And just an aside, the old Prism wouldn't even load my full live stream. Never mind, run it. If Prism will run that stream, it's pretty much gonna run anything you can possibly throw at it. This is gonna be fun, so you know what? Let's get to it! If you haven't tried Prism Live Studio yet, you really should. There is a link in the description and it's totally free and open source. The Mac version is almost here as well. First, let me build a quick game stream. I think that's the most common type of stream that someone's going to build. All right, so we're gonna start out with a standard basic scene and we're gonna rename that. Uh, we're just gonna use this as our main camera and it's going to be a nested scene. So I'm gonna start it with NS. We're gonna go NS cam. Then I'm going to go ahead and add a video capture device. Click OK. And I'm just gonna call this camera main. And you wanna label these just because when you get a lot, you'll thank me. We're gonna use the HDMI one. We're gonna scroll down here and we're gonna use a custom audio device and select the proper audio output for this particular one. Now Prism has something else called Prism Cam and we're gonna use that to add some flourishes to another camera. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up Prism Lens and this is what it looks like. And it's pretty simple to set this up. Now I do have a camera that I can use in multiple locations. So that is kind of a blessing. So we're gonna change this to that and it allows me to reuse this camera. So that would be Prism Lens 1 and I can just end Prism Lens and close it down and there we go. So what I'm gonna do here is click the plus. We're gonna add another scene and this is gonna be NS. Click the plus, we're gonna add a virtual video capture device and we're just gonna call this Cam BG and click OK. And we're gonna go and use Prism Lens 1 and we wanna use the custom audio device and we want that to be our ProLink Audio 1. And we gotta bring that up, bring up Prism Lens again to make that work. Boom, there we go. And I'm not gonna add any background in here. You'll see why in a second. Our next thing would be to create a main camera scene. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and create a main scene. And in this scene, we're gonna have our main camera. So let's go with uh, video capture. Well, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna use it as a nested scene. And we're gonna go and select scene. And then we can just select the scene that we want, which is our original camera. And we're gonna resize this up a little bit and we're gonna click the plus. And we're gonna go and we're going to add uh, Prism Chat, so we can have folks with Prism talking in here, or we can we can see our physical chat in here. So there we go. Now we'll have our physical chat in here. We can stretch that out, make it half the screen, and we'll just go ahead and expand this out. We can put another box down here for any kind of text or whatever. That's really easy. Let's go in here and we're gonna use our text templates. And maybe we wanted to add a Facebook link. All right, so what we do is we just go to our social and we go to Facebook. And here we might put our Facebook. So I don't remember what mine is. 
but I think that's probably it, maybe. You can go in here and change colors and font sizes and all kinds of other stuff. I'm not gonna bother. I'm just gonna drag this down here and bigging it a little bit. And it's pretty simple. You can do that. We could add our YouTube one or any of the other ones that we want. Uh, so let's add Twitch and we'll go in here. And I think my Twitch one, let's find the Twitch here, is, I think that's what it is. I don't know, don't, don't quote me on it. But we'll bring it down here. We'll embiggen it so it's about the same size as the other one. And we can actually go in and embiggen it in um, in the font settings and everything else. That way it'll look a lot cleaner. You can see I blew this up so it looks fuzzy. This one too. You don't have to do that. You could go into the properties and you, you probably should go in here and embiggen it right here. But then that way you're not gonna get the fuzziness and all that sort of stuff. So that's how you really should be adjusting it. Anyway, that gives you a pretty good idea. Maybe we want uh, a little bit more flourish here. So let's add a video. We're gonna go to a media source and we'll call this BG vid. Again, you wanna name this stuff so you know what it is. Makes it a heck of a lot easier to reuse it and do all that kind of stuff. And I'm just gonna go find a location where I have a background video. We'll use this one right here. We're gonna loop it, and there we go. All we have to do is move this down so it's behind everything. Let's expand this up a little bit. Move this down so it's behind everything, and there we go. We got a pretty simple, basic thing. Chances are, instead of putting these flourishes in here for our uh, social media things. I would probably put stream labels for donations and super chats and that sort of stuff. But either way, that works just fine. It fills it out. Now we have a pretty nice looking little main scene. So the next thing we can do is go ahead and add a game scene. So we're going to click the plus right here and let's call this game and click OK. And all we have to do is add our game. All right, so I went and switched my audio directly to come out of my headphones from my computer so that when I have the game on, it will play through the headphones and not through the speakers so that it's not feeding back into the microphone, which means that if you wanna hear the game, you're going to have to wear headphones. It's just the way it is. This is how it goes, folks. That's why all game streamers out there are wearing headphones. So we can click the plus on sources in our game scene and we're going to go ahead and select game capture we're going to click ok you can call it whatever you want whatever game you're using you're probably not going to be playing more than one game so game capture works just fine we're going to capture any full screen application whatever you want to do normal is fine it works just fine you click ok and after a moment or two it's going to pick up the full screen application all you have to do is switch to it. So now even if I switch away from the full screen application, it still has it, it still gets it, you're still good. But you notice we don't have any audio. So we wanna go ahead and capture the audio. We're gonna go ahead and click the plus. And in this case, we're gonna to go to our application audio capture. There are a couple of ways to do this, but I think this is the best one. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna call this game sound and click OK. And we can drop this down and select the actual game window, which is at this point Hogwarts Legacy. Click OK. We have our game sound. So we're all set. We have our scene ready. All we need to do is add us. So we're going to click the plus and we're going to go down here to our scene and we're going to select our other camera, our flourish camera. So we're going to click OK and we're going to add existing. We're gonna scroll down to our nested camera flourish and bada bing, there we go. Now, it's not removing the background like it should be, so what I'm gonna do is go and select my prism camera. 
So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to my, we're gonna click the plus, and we're gonna go here, and we're gonna load a background here. It puts a green screen behind us, and we are gonna go ahead and move that out of our way here. And then I'm just gonna right click on the NS Cam Flourish. We're gonna go to Filters, and I'm going to go ahead and click the plus, and we're just gonna add a chroma key. Click OK, and bada bing. Now we are in our scene with our background removed. It's pretty simple. It's pretty simple. We can put us anywhere we want. We could put a background thingy on here as well if we wanted to to uh, add more style like a box or a border or something, but that's fine. That's all we care about is that we are in the scene somehow. So now we can play the game. We can see that Cam BG is our audio, obviously, and game sound is the game audio. So we can adjust the volume on either of these or play the game or whatever we want to do. So. Basically, now we have our main scene where we can chat with the audience and we have our gaming scene where we can play the game. And if you get this where it's not up, you just click on the game, it'll come up, it's gonna be okay. But if we look down here in the bottom left, the most important thing, our CPU usage is practically none. Practically no CPU usage at all here, which is unheard of considering how it used to be. Uh, Hogwarts is not an easy game to run. Now, I'm not playing it, admittedly, but I'm also recording and I have five or six or 10 different things open at the same time, running the game, talking to you, and it is functioning flawlessly without any problems. So let's go ahead and add a transition and we're gonna add a Luma Wipe transition and this one we will select Let's use watercolor and there we go click OK and so now when we switch back and forth from our main scene there we go so now we've got a nice little cam thing going on there let's move that and there we go gotta click on the game when you're coming over here now if you don't want to have to click on the game when you do that that's fine We'll just go down here and we'll remove game capture. And so we can just delete it right here. And instead we can use something like screen capture. So we'll go and we'll select uh, display capture is probably the most reliable one of these. And we'll just put game on here. Click OK. And all we have to do is select the actual um, screen that we want to use in this case that's the one click OK and there we go we just move this down below our camera and boom and we still have our game sound because we loaded that separately now if you didn't want to use the automatic game capture sound that we used we could capture our sound for the game in another way we can go and click the plus and instead of selecting application audio capture which allows you to select specific audio for the game we could just capture our desktop audio, in which case it would be audio output capture and click OK. And then what you wanna do is select the audio that your game is playing through. In this case, the audio the game is playing through is my Zone wireless headphones. If I click OK, and there we go. We can hear them playing right in my headset. Perfect. Perfect, super easy. So that's two different ways to add the game two different ways to add the audio in a really, really simple gaming setup. Now all you gotta do is create a simple coming soon or starting soon, maybe a countdown timer and an end screen and maybe a be right back screen. And those are really easy, especially with Prism and all the awesome text tools. Easy, right? You could have everything up and running in just a few minutes and have it look absolutely amazing. Now let's load up my extremely complex stream and see how it goes. All right, so let's load up our live stream. I'm gonna click up here and I'm gonna go to our, well, let's go to our scene collections first and we're gonna import. And I'm just gonna go and find the scene collection here that I saved out of my OBS. And that would be this right here. I 
<laughs> Boom. Man, that loaded fast. Click here, move this out. Doesn't have my camera in it yet, but I didn't have my camera in it the other way either. We're gonna load the profile as well. We're gonna go to import and boom. So now all my settings should be there and all that other stuff. And as you can see, the colors are the same. Everything works. And if you look at the CPU down below, well, it's pretty much what you'd expect. I always have my stuff over here because I do have a lot of scenes and everything that I go through. So as you can see, I have lots and lots of nested scenes. And I know you're not seeing the camera here. So let's go ahead and bring that up. And we can see that it is the uh, snap camera. But at the moment, my snap camera is not functioning properly. So we're just gonna go ahead and select that and be done with it. So now we can go and see that our main scene is populated or should be. See, this is the problem with having a ridiculous, ridiculous amount of extra garbage in your live stream. I have so many things in here that uh, affect everything else. So the reason why some of this stuff isn't working is because these are plugins that aren't currently inside of Prism. So that kind of explains it. But we have our main camera working. We have all of the other stuff working that you could possibly think of. So all of our all of our scenes are gonna work. The Monica cam scene should work, minus Monica, because obviously she is not here filming with me. So Monica's camera is right there. It's just not loaded in and right here. But all these scenes work exactly as they're supposed to. I'd have to mess around with this whole entire thing to remove the plugins that don't exist in Prism and or find ways to work around it. And there are lots of ways to work around it. One of the plugins that I use is Waveform. Prism has its own version of Waveform. I can easily swap that out. But the most important thing here is that I have all of these scenes loaded. It loaded them up in about two seconds. And you can see down here that I'm not using hardly any CPU. They have truly fixed this. If you want to put together a ridiculously complicated live stream in Prism Live Studio, you shouldn't have any problems whatsoever. And I noticed before when I was on my main scene that all of the original stuff that I have is working. So up top there you see all of the stream labels are working, the animations all coming in from stream elements to activate all of my stuff. The only thing that's not here is the camera and the only reason why the camera is not there is very simple. It's because I have plugins working on the camera that aren't set up that it would take me a while to work through and fix for the video, but it's really irrelevant because just loading in this entire sequence on my old Prism Live Studio, it would crash it, it would be a problem, it would fail and it would run miserably. My CPU would be at like 99%. And here it is down to 0.4%. Just amazing. Now, like I said before, if it runs that mess, it's gonna run anything that you could possibly throw at it. Now, if you wanna learn more about the things that Prism Live Studio can do, you should definitely check this video out. And I wanna say a big thanks to Prism Live Studio for sponsoring this video. I couldn't possibly continue to do this without them or you, so thanks. And if you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks to help make you a better live streamer or YouTuber, subscribe to the channel. My name is Michael Fire Jr. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.